Thank you everybody for uh, watching the video about the, uh, the backpackers, the budget four-wheel drive vehicle build. And thank you very much for not treating me as if I'd run over your puppy. Uh, nobody, not one, has actually been insulting, but many have made some interesting suggestions. Almost all of them have been, well, I think you're missing the point. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. I'm going to start with vehicle choice. Five or six have said Suzuki Grand Vichara. Why wasn't that on the list? I'll tell you why it wasn't on the list. Because I didn't think of it. It's an excellent choice. In fact, I think some of them actually have low, low transfer gearing. Clearance is a little low, but not much different from the X-Trail. Maybe even a little better, but a definitely a brilliant choice. So add that to the list. Um, quite a few suggestions. Discovery One. I love the Discovery One. The Discovery One for, for beginners is fantastic. It's very good off-road, easy to modify. But old Discoveries, and you can get them for cheap. The reason why you can get them so cheap is because they're so expensive to run and maintain. They are very, they're, they're Land Rovers, which means they cost a lot to keep on the road. And I said to <clears throat> Kate and Cam, don't buy a Land Rover. Yes, you will fall in love with it, and that's the problem. The X-Trail, they're your training wheels. After four or five years, you're going to sell it, and you're going to upgrade and do something better. Don't buy a vehicle that you're going to fall in love with, because honestly, you, you're just going to be frustrated, because it's going to cost you a lot of money to keep going. It's the nature of old Land Rovers. It's the nature of any old, old, really old vehicle, but Land Rovers definitely are more expensive than most to keep running because they're not particularly well built, not particularly reliable. But they're wonderful to drive, and that's why people fall in love with them. So, uh, some people said uh, Mitsubishi Delica, the, uh, the, the, the van. It's very good. It's based on a second generation Pajero chassis. Too expensive. Far too expensive. They paid $7,000 for that car. So let's think, okay, what could you get for $7,000? That would not cost a lot of money to, to run and operate and maintain. <clears throat> That's the criteria. It's a budget build. Um, a few people have said, oh, uh, you're never going to, uh, you know, this is hopeless. You can't cross the Simpson Desert in that. You're right. I think you're missing the point. You can't build an absolute budget vehicle to cross the Simpson because to cross the Simpson Desert you're going to need extra fuel, water, range, payload, and so the costs go up. So that whole point of this is to do some exploring, maybe occasional beach. Um, the X-Trail is not great on the beach when compared to a big four-wheel drive with uh, high-profile tires that you can let right down. It's not going to be as good. But for $7,000, I wanted to help them get <clears throat> on the road for a little amount of money as possible, for, uh, but, but focusing on the things that they have to have to stay safe. There is no harm in getting stuck. It's okay to get stuck. So in the videos ahead, we've got a video on the electrics, the basic electrical system, which is, which is so simple, very inexpensive, and it works really well. However, it's not automated. They're going to have to do a few things. This is the cost of saving money. It hasn't got an automatic split charge system. It's got a split charge system that they actually have to mentally, ah, I'm now at the beach or I'm now at my camping spot. I need to disconnect the main battery. That's the price you pay for not spending money on a complicated split charge system. The split charge system is now in their heads. It doesn't cost any money and doesn't eat any hay when it's in their heads. We have a tire issue. Tires were a challenge with the X-Trail because of the type of vehicle it was. And we go through that process and find some tires. They were a compromise. I think a very good compromise, but they were a compromise. So again, budget. They didn't have the money to replace the rims. 
to get a smaller rim to get a higher profile tire because you couldn't really add tire diameter without increasing suspension height. That's more money. So no, it can't be done. The whole point is budget, budget, budget. And at the end, we talk about what stuff that you actually have to buy to take with you on the trip so that A, if, you're, if, you, if you get stuck and you have some difficulties, you can get yourself out. Or if somebody comes to help you, you've got some equipment to help them get you out. And some safety equipment. Going off into the wilderness, uh, you, you can't take it lightly. Particularly in a place like Australia, where the distances are so vast and the conditions can be life-threatening. Every year, tourists die in Australia because of ignorance. No, nothing else. It's, they don't die from thirst, they die from ignorance. It's the chain of issues. So with this, I'm trying to teach them some basic principles and so that when they take the stuff with them and they go and do in a trip and they're on their own and they're middle of nowhere having that wonderful time we all love about traveling in Australia that you can get away and just be in the middle of nowhere with no, nobody around. In for them to enable them to do that with the, littlest, the smallest amount of spend, that's our goal. Not to drive up the most difficult part of tra tracks and cross deserts like the Simpson. Keep watching, more to come. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.